Hey, this is Ryan with Goodwin Racing. Today we're going to talk about NC sway bars. Uh, starting with the basics, what does a sway bar do? The sway bar is connecting the left and right side of the cars via the control arms. And this is your primary tool for reducing body roll, uh, side to side motion uh, going through a corner. Uh, you'll notice that the stock uh, MX-5 is uh, it's a bit of a boat. Uh, so if you've got completely stock suspension and you go through a corner, even on stock tires, that thing is moving all over the place. Um, upgrading your sway bars is the best way to reduce that body roll. Now, a lot of times we get a call, somebody says, well, should I do springs or sway bars? And really the answer is both. They don't do the same job. The spring also does a little bit of resisting side to side motion, but it also helps with the pitch and the squat, uh, which sway bars don't do anything about. Um, but the spring can't reduce that side to side motion as much as you're gonna need. Uh, to try to replace the sway bars job by just upping the spring rate, you'd have to go crazy stiff with your springs, uh, which is gonna hurt your ride quality, uh, it's just not, good, not a good way to do it. You want to do sway bars, you probably also want to do springs or coilovers. Uh, it all works as a system. But on the sway bar side of things, um, the important thing to remember is what, what helps you make a decision about which sway bar to use. Um, some people choose it based on the color of the sway bar. I don't recommend that. Uh, there's different specs of sway bars, different stiffnesses, and the most important thing to do is pair the sway bar stiffness to the tire that you're going to use, and to some degree also how you're going to use the car. The more lateral load or the more grip that the car can generate, the stiffer your sway bar needs to be because the car is going to want to lean over more. Uh, so race cars are going to be running very stiff sway bars. Street cars want to be running much lighter sway bars. If you've got too stiff of a sway bar on a car that doesn't generate that much grip, something on, you know, uh, your general street tire, you're going to have a car that's skipping over bumps and feels really stiff and maybe it feels like a go-kart, which is cool, uh, but it's not going to actually handle very well. So that's the important thing. Keep in mind that you're picking the sway bar based on the specs and how it pairs with what you're doing with the car and what tires you have. Uh, we've got two of our most popular options for sway bars for the NC here. Uh, the one I was just holding, this is the Roadster Sport sway bar, which is actually a fairly new addition. Uh, and this is the Progress sway bar. These have been around for a long time, super popular. Uh, we have found that the NC tends to work a lot like, uh, like a Lotus Elise. Uh, it likes a lot of sway bar and not as much spring. That tends to work really well on the NC. Um, now that doesn't mean you shouldn't upgrade the springs, it just means that relative to some other cars out there, the ratio of how stiff you go with the sway bar and how stiff you go with the springs is a little more uh, going towards the sway bar stiffness. Uh, but you don't really have to worry about that and start doing a bunch of calculations. We've basically done all of that work for you and figured out what works. Um, so you can always give us a call. Hopefully this, this video will help to answer some of those questions. Uh, and you might just know from the video exactly what you need, but you can always give us a call as well and we'll talk to you about what you're doing with the, with the car and, and find the right thing for you. Uh, the progress are stiffer. Progress are going to be 28 and a half millimeter diameter on the front with a 6.3 millimeter wall. And the rear is a 17 and a half millimeter uh, solid bar. And when I mentioned wall thickness on the front, that's because it's hollow. So we're talking about the thickness of the tube and then there's basically just air inside, a uh, solid bar in the rear, which is pretty standard for a, a, a rear bar. Um, the nice thing about tubular bars is that as you go larger in diameter, uh, you can make it a stiffer bar without it being super heavy, uh, as it would be if it were a solid bar. So actually the tubular bars end up being stiffer than a solid bar and weighing a little bit less, which is really nice. Uh, the Roadster Sport bar is a 29 millimeter diameter but a four, four millimeter wall thickness. Um, we could have developed the Roadster Sport bar to be a softer bar by doing a smaller diameter, but we chose to match basically the same diameter as the Progress bar, but go thinner on the wall. And what that does is it gets us the stiffness spec that we wanted while making it as light as possible. If we had gone smaller in diameter, uh, we would have had to go thicker on the wall thickness and that would have made for a heavier bar at the same stiffness. So we decided to do fairly large diameter but thinner wall 
so that you've got the lightest possible bar in the car, if that's the right bar for you. And to match that in the rear on the Roadster Sport bars, uh, this is the rear, that is a 16 millimeter rear bar, which we found through a bunch of testing and trying different sizes balances really nicely. So both of these sets, uh, Progress and Roadster Sport, the front to rear bar thicknesses uh, are chosen very carefully to match well to each other. Uh, they are also adjustable, so you'll see that you've got on the Roadster Sports three holes in the rear. Uh, the Progress have one less hole, but you still have adjustability. Two holes in the rear on the Progress. And on the fronts, uh, you will see that the Progress have three holes. Roadster Sport has four. Um, nothing wrong with three holes front, two holes rear on the Progress, and that's actually uh, generally. The, the standard. Uh, we just took the opportunity with the Roadster Sport bars to give you an extra hole front and rear so that you've got a little bit wider range of adjustment to suit different tires that you might be using. Um, and also to give you a little, actually the four holes in the front are really giving you a little bit smaller increment of change uh, between each of those settings so you can really fine tune things. So nothing wrong with three holes, two holes. Uh, but we took the opportunity when developing the Roadster Sport bars to just give you that extra little bit of adjustability. Don't make your choice based on how many holes are in the sway bar. Uh, you want the right stiffness for what you're doing again. So uh, what's the, you know, the specs are great, but what should you be choosing based on what you're doing with the car, as I've been talking about? Uh, the Roadster Sport bars are specifically tailored to be a street sway bar set. Uh, these pair on their softer settings, uh, when the hole dan links are in the softest hole settings, uh, to pair really nicely all the way down to a factory tire, just one of your standard all season tires. The grip level that tire creates is going to work really well with these and these will work all the way up to uh, your stickier high performance summer tires. Still street tires only. Uh, these pair perfectly with that sort of range of street tire. Now, if you're going to be doing uh, aggressive driving uh, and going to be running at minimum a really sticky summer tire all the way up to maybe track day or race tires, and if you're going to be doing a lot of track use, we would recommend the Progress Bars because they are stiffer uh, and that's what they're designed for. Um, there is some overlap, but for the most part, I would use the Roadster Sport bars in a car that's going to be primarily used on the street. Now we have tested the Roadster Sport bars. We just got back from Laguna Seca and spent three days doing back-to-back -back runs on our budget MC project uh, with the Roadster Sport bars. And we were on 200 Treadwear tires, uh, which that category is actually sort of infamous for being very sticky and generating a lot of grip. And these bars did great. They were on the stiffer end of the spectrum and they did a really good job. I could go for maybe just a little bit more stiffness. So maybe the progress bars uh, in their middle setting might have been the perfect choice, but the Roadster Sport bars will get that job done for you if you're gonna run street tires and maybe go to the track or autocross the car occasionally. Uh, but if you're getting more serious, progress bars are for you. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with running the progress bars on the street. They'll work great, uh, but you wouldn't want them on a car running factory tires. You know, your same tire that the car comes with from the dealer. Uh, for something like that, you need to be on Roadster Sport bars for those, for those harder, less grippy street tires. But if you're gonna run a, a summer tire um, all the way up to track day tires, Progress will do the trick for you. And then for the racers who need even more sway bar, really popular trick to do is get the Progress bars, but actually the version that are for the RX-8. Uh, those are same dimension, same geometry as the NC version of the Progress bars, but just larger and thicker. And so if you're gonna be on Hoosiers, for example, running slicks, doing 100% track use, consider the RX-8 bars. Um, now, that basically covers all of your uses that you might be uh, considering uh, for your car. The only other thing to keep in mind is that you probably want to do end links at the same time as the sway bars. The end links are what connect uh, these holes on the sway bar down to your control arm. Uh, if you lower the car, it's especially important because the factory end links are just one fixed length. As you lower the car, the relationship between the sway bar and the control arm mounting point changes. It gets shorter, and so you need an adjustable length sway bar uh, end link to accommodate that. However, I really recommend end links 
anytime that you upgrade sway bars. The reason is that the factory end links are really designed to transfer a certain amount of force and the factory sway bar is much softer than any of these aftermarket ones, even the Roadster Sport. Um, once you upgrade the sway bar to a stiffer bar, even if you haven't lowered the car, you are now putting a lot more load through those end links. We have definitely seen people bend end links, factory end links, uh, because they didn't upgrade those and they put stiffer bars on the car. Actually, the most common time that we see that is going to be if somebody's racing the car in uh, street class autocross, because you're not allowed to change the springs. You can only change the sway bars. Uh, you can't do coilovers or anything like that. And so all of the force is left to the sway bar to do that job. Um, you're going to bend end links. So uh, if, you're, if you're in street class, make sure that you upgrade those end links at the same time as upgrading your front bar. Street class can't upgrade uh, more than one bar, so it's very common. It's always uh, the, the front bar that everybody changes. Um, if you're going to be just driving the car on the street, not autocrossing, uh, at stock ride height, you might be able to get away on the Roadster Sport bars with a factory end link, but I would prefer to put a stiffer end link. We've got Roadster Sport end links. Uh, that are developed that work really well with these. They also work with progress bars. We've got a bunch of other end link options on the website, uh, more than we can talk about here. So you can always give us a call if you're using the car in a little bit more extreme environment and you want to talk about what the best one for your use is. But uh, the Roastport end links will handle most of the you know general street and you know kind of fun driving uh, sort of applications just fine. Uh, and if they are adjustable in length as well, if you lower the car. That's about everything for sway bars. Uh, there's a bunch of things we can cover, but uh, you know the video would just get longer and longer. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, if you want to look at pricing, if you want to check availability on the bars, go to goodwinracing.com, and you, there's a email and also a phone number uh, on our website. If you have any questions for us, we can talk to you about your specific uh, use of the car and, and the best things for you. Have a great day.